friends welcome or welcome back to my channel this is sandra and i make videos all about cyber security having a career in technology as well as work vlogs and today we are going to be talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart which is coding languages for cyber security and i've gotten a lot of comments on this from you guys on this channel just based on what languages you guys should learn if you should choose between coding and cyber security well honestly you don't really have to if you want to do both so these are the top seven programming and scripting languages to learn if you are trying to get into cyber security Okay, so the first one will probably be no surprise to you guys, which is JavaScript. JavaScript is one of those OG languages that oftentimes pen testers, red teamers, and ethical hackers use for all of their scripting. But one of the best things about JavaScript is how versatile it is. So you could have probably learned JavaScript when you were learning front end development or just full stack development or writing automation scripts, there's a big chance that you might already be familiar with JavaScript. So even though the language does have a few quirks, it is very, very useful in multiple domains across security and just tech in general. And according to W3Schools, which is the website I used basically throughout all of college, JavaScript is the world's most popular programming language because you can use it for so many different things. JavaScript is a interpreted just-in-time compiled language and it also has a lot of built-in class functions for you to already use, which also makes it a lot more easier and convenient for beginners. JavaScript is often used with HTML for web development purposes, but if you're using it for cybersecurity, you're going to be using JavaScript for a lot more scripting, automation, creating and delivering your own payloads for ethical hacking purposes. And there are a lot of courses out there that can teach you this, and I'm definitely going to link below a whole bunch of resources for each of these languages that I talk about today. All right, so next up is bash scripting or shell scripting. So these are sometimes used interchangeably depending on what you're talking about. But shell scripting is basically when you're scripting in any shell and then bash scripting is specifically when you're scripting in bash. So shell scripting is basically writing a program for the shell to execute. And for those of you who may not be as familiar with shell scripting, a shell is basically an interactive interface, which you can kind of think of as similar to your command line. And it basically allows you to enter and run different commands in Linux or Unix based environments. So let's say you're trying to move a file from one location to the next location. You could do that manually through the GUI or the UI of the operating system. But you could also just do it through the shell through a quick command and that will move everything for you. So there are many shells out there in Linux and I can put a screenshot of the different kinds if you want to look into them in more detail but the main reason why people want to use shell script is because of those manual things moving a file somewhere or doing something repetitive over and over again so instead you can just write a script and basically be able to get things done a lot faster than if you did it manually a few different examples of this can also be executing code automating any code compiling processes you can also install different things start or kill any applications so they're kind of similar to batch files because you can basically chain a bunch of different commands together and they basically just become little helper files or helper programs for you to run anytime you have to automate or do something you can just create a bash or shell script instead to do that thing especially for processes that you have to repeat over and over again on a weekly or daily basis all right so the next language is python and i know so many people are very very into python these days especially because it's one of the languages that's getting the most popularity and growth these days a lot of schools are using it for their data science programs their coding programs but also now their cybersecurity programs because of how useful it is to use python for scripting now python again is one of those more versatile languages there are many use cases for python including just good old web development there's a lot of different libraries out there and frameworks that you can use to incorporate python into your websites but because python is so lightweight python has become very very popular for a lot of different areas in cybersecurity. so the basic definition of python is an interpreted high level programming language and there is this whole philosophy behind why python is the way it is but it is basically meant for code readability and for someone to be able to look at python code and know exactly what's going on versus something that might be a little more complex like c or uh, c++ and even java and c sharp so one thing that i've learned from a software developer that i know is that python is not actually very efficient so if you're building out large frameworks and large systems from python the runtime can be a bit impacted and a lot of the more popular python libraries are actually written in c and c pandas is one of those very popular ones which is a super popular python library for different data analytics and data manipulation tools so that is definitely something to note but there are more and more applications out there that are using python so definitely not saying it's impossible or a big no-no but i do think that python is best used 
for lightweight scripting and writing different automated programs, different scripts that you can use over and over, especially ones that you can run really quick or run in the background and have it just do its thing. And another thing is that because Python is a lot more easier to read, it is a bit more beginner friendly to learn if you are picking up a brand new coding language or have never picked up coding before. You can make pretty much all of the data structures that you know and love in Python. So it really does have the best of both worlds in terms of scripting and in terms of just coding. If I would have to choose between Python and JavaScript and which one you would learn first, I would probably pick Python just because it is so versatile and there are so many libraries out there that can do very many different things. A recent project that I have done using Python is web scraping and there is a beautiful soup library out there that is so easy to use and using beautiful soup with a library like pandas where you can basically manipulate any kind of data in whatever files that you're looking at or tables that you're looking at makes it so so easy so i would definitely look into those libraries if you're interested in that scripting side of things or web scraping or anything like that but i will say that learning how to at least read javascript is very very important if you're trying to get into pen testing because you're going to be looking at javascript when you're looking at the developer tools on chrome or looking at what a website's doing or just being able to understand what requests are being sent back and forth even though that isn't necessarily javascript it will definitely be really helpful to you to at least understand and know how to read javascript but of course if you kind of learn one coding language you kind of understand everything that's going on other programming languages if you can just look behind the syntax and the basic changes so starting with python is definitely a really good option okay so the next one is sql and i've always considered sql as kind of a language but maybe not really but basically it is used for creating database queries and i have seen sql queries that go on for lines and lines up to 100 lines and they can get really really complex and that's why there are dbas out there that write these queries but if you are trying to kind of get that full stack experience i would definitely look into sql but one really good thing that sql is good for in cybersecurity is sql injection so i'm sure you guys have heard of sql injections it's one of the os top 10 injection attacks and basically it is when there's some kind of data field and you can enter an sql query and have that run in the database and if that application that you're running against is very not secure then that sql query can basically go through and fetch you that information that you're trying to get whether it's confidential information personal information about customers or something or even just to be really malicious and drop all their tables you can do that with sql injection and that's why learning sql is really helpful because if you're doing pen testing or ethical hacking or red teaming you're probably gonna at least have to know basic sql queries and these are just regular select from uh, where clauses different wild cards that you can do drop tables update etc things like that so if you get the gist of those basic commands out there in sql it'll be really easy for you to pick up the rest when you have to and you probably won't be writing any union inner joins in the beginning but just for sql injection learning purposes learning those basic commands will really just help you get your foot in the door and it's also really easy to kind of pick up i'm sure all of us have heard of the select star from table name and that's kind of like the most basic line in sql if you're a developer on a smaller project you're most likely not going to have a dba and you're going to be the dba for this because you are full stack so learning sql is really convenient okay so the next language is go or golang so this one was actually really interesting for me to look into because i have never personally used go at all but i know that it's an open source language created by google that is getting a lot more traction nowadays and one of the main reasons why it is important for cybersecurity is because a lot of recent malware is written in go if you are someone who is looking into malware analysis or is part of that malware development community then you definitely want to look into go and at least understand and know how to read the syntax of that language it's also been reported that the number of malware that are written in go has increased 2000 percent in the last few years since 2017 so obviously a lot of the malware community is looking into this language and a lot of it is because of the advantages of using go versus python and this is because a lot of malware detection softwares are looking for malware code languages like c c and python but for someone who is using go to write a lot of their malware programs there's actually a much lower detection rate because those malware detection softwares aren't necessarily looking for malware written in go obviously this will hopefully get better over time but for now that is one of the big reasons why go is getting very popular with the malware community another thing that is really convenient about go as well as an aspect of it that actually makes it a bit simpler than python is that even though go is a compiled language it can actually be compiled into a single binary file so basically that means that it can link all of its dependency libraries together into one file so instead of having to download dependencies on whatever server that you're deploying or shipping your malware code to the only thing you have to do is to upload that compiled file and it'll be able to run on its own and go also comes with a lot of the libraries and tools that you already need built in 
so you don't have to look for third-party softwares or third-party libraries as part of your coding process two recent examples of go malware are sun shuttle and well mess and there are definitely a lot more out there if you guys want to look into it but i would definitely say go is a really good option if you're trying to get into that malware space or also trying to pick up a language that is relatively niche and a lot of people haven't really learned it yet so you could really have a step up over other potential candidates who are trying to get into cybersecurity by knowing such a lucrative and unique language like go all right the next language is c okay so the main reason why you want to use c is because of how fast and efficient this language is it is a low level programming language so the best advantages is that it can help you get low level access to memory and system processes for an operating system. One popular use is to use C to simulate a library hijacking attack. And I'm also gonna add C++ in here, even though they are technically different languages. But if you're able to use C and C++ hand in hand, it can be very, very beneficial to you because C++ will help you really write fast and efficient code. And a lot of the enterprise software that companies use nowadays can be reverse engineered with C++. So having that background knowledge of both of these languages will really help you just in terms of reverse engineering software, but also reverse engineering malware, which in turn helps you find vulnerabilities in whatever applications or code that you are using or that you may be doing an ethical hacking or pen testing campaign for. Another fun fact is that a lot of cybersecurity tools like Nmap are written in C++ and so is a lot of malware. So being able to understand and read source code for different kinds of malware code out there, for different software, for different open source software is going to be really important to you to kind of understand that bigger picture if you're trying to get into that lower level side of cybersecurity. Okay, so the next language is Java. And I know a lot of people really think of Java as an object-oriented programming language, which it completely is, but I would argue from a person who used to be a software developer point of view that Java is actually really, really good to know because first of all, Java and C Sharp are very similar in syntax. So if you know Java, you, you kind of basically know C Sharp without all of the ASP and .NET stuff. But this is useful because let's say you're trying to get into source code analysis and you're looking at different web applications and you focus on web applications or you're focusing on Android, which is also in Java. So you can basically hit web applications and mobile applications and be able to read their source code and any C Sharp applications. So you can basically read source code for Android devices, any web applications written in Java and any web applications written in C Sharp. So if you're a web application pen tester and you are looking at source code of an application as part of your pen testing routine, then this will be really helpful to you because you actually know what the code is doing. You can just look at code and see, hey, this is vulnerable to SQL injection because you're not using XYZ. And that is a very useful skill to have because it will save you so much time. And honestly, coming from a development background, I find it very, very helpful to know how to write web applications because I know what developers are thinking when they're doing certain things. And if you have that mindset of, okay, if I was a developer, how would I code this up and why would I code it up this way? Is it just the easy way to do it? Am I actually using any kind of protection for my database, like at least word procedures? Those thoughts are kind of things that you think about because you have that development background. So that is why it's really helpful to have that development mindset even in cybersecurity. And Java is a really, really good place to start because it is also one of the most popular languages out there for writing backend software or backend code. And it is definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. So if you are interested in full stack development, Java is a really good backend or server side language to learn, especially if you're gonna be working with the security or pen testing side of web applications or Android devices. Okay, so that is all seven languages and scripting languages best for cybersecurity, but there are two runner ups that I will add. And one of them is not really a language but is more just learning basic Linux commands that are very, very helpful for you to be able to easily navigate the world of Linux because a lot of times you will probably be going through a Linux server or if you're just using a Linux machine. I would highly recommend looking into Kali Linux, which is the most popular distribution of Linux for pen testing and ethical hackers. So definitely look into that as well as basic commands and the tools that Kali Linux comes with. And the next thing is PHP, which is a server-side programming language. So I think PHP kind of gets a bad rep from people who are just coming out of college because it's kind of seen as an older language, um, something that's very weird to look at. It's also a bit difficult to learn, so they often don't teach it in college courses, maybe in like the higher level courses where you're doing like server-side stuff, but PHP is actually very popular as a server-side language, and PHP is actually also used in 80% of the 10 million most popular websites in the internet out there today. So very very widely used even though it is a bit hard to read and not gonna lie i have written a tiny tiny bit of php in my life but honestly i have never really clicked with the language just because of the way that it's weirdly worded but people who like php really like php so 
is definitely very useful, very versatile. A very popular hacking technique that uses PHP is DDoS attacks. So basically allowing you to take down websites or even just delete all the data on a website. So if you're someone in cybersecurity who knows how to use PHP, then that basically helps you protect your websites more from other hackers who are using PHP for malicious things. And of course this can help mitigate different denial of service attacks. So it is really useful, but I wouldn't say that I recommend it as the number one language to learn just because it is a bit harder to read and I don't want to say readability is everything but it is key when you're a beginner that's trying to learn a new language especially for something like cybersecurity. I would still want you guys to learn something that is a bit more broad so you can use it for multiple things um, rather than just something like server-side scripting or server-side programming. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Definitely let me know in the comments below what you guys think. If there's any languages you think I may have missed, maybe some that should be removed from this list. I would definitely love to hear all of you guys' opinions on those but this is just what I've seen and what I've done research on for the most popular languages in my mind of course of course this isn't like an iron fist absolute list but okay that rhymed but you get what i mean if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications if you want to see more videos from me i post videos every wednesday at 2 p.m and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye